name is Dr. Rick Sigill. I'm and action. Hey, uh, Jay had a... This is Kirk to them. And action. Hey, everyone. It's Dr. Rick. And Abe had a question about bulging discs. Uh, bulging disc would be the discs in your back, lumbar discs specifically, but you can have the discs in your neck also pinch out or bulge. So if this is the first time you're finding me, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below and the thumbs up button in case you happen to like this video. And if you like it, share it with somebody else that might be having the same problem of a bulging disc. So uh, let's get into the nomenclature. What is a bulging disc? Well, let me just show you mine first off. This is my MRI from a little while ago. Uh, me, uh, here somewhere. So uh, this specifically says broad-based disc with central protrusion. So uh, enough of that and everything else there. So it's not good to have a broad-based disc, but I want to show you my broad-based disc uh, right here. Hold on a second. Let me just figure out how to... Oh, there you go. So that is a lumbar spine x-ray. Uh, I'm sorry, MRI. And uh, th this is me from the side. So hello, me. Uh, these are my back bones cut in half. This is the sacrum, that's the uh, low back area. This is the lumbar area. This is the spinal cord that comes down. These are the, this is your back where you feel your back and these are the little spinous processes and this here's the abdomen. So um, how this works is that these bones are not perfect squares, but they're supposed to be somewhat squarish and then the end solid, which they are, and then these little things here are the discs that sit between the lumbar vertebral bodies. And if you notice, the discs do protrude. This one, no, this is more of an anomaly, but there's your typical disc. That means there's a lot of fat when you see white. This is not so much fat. There's a little bit of degeneration here, and this is a little more fat. But this guy here with not that much fat, guess what you see? You see protrusion. If you notice, it's pushing out this way and it's denting the white part. So it's denting the cord cover to the spinal cord right there. A little bit there too, but right there. So hopefully you'll notice that. And if you um, look on this model, uh, this is a lumbar spine too. These are the nerve roots that come out. You can see the nerve, uh, the cord goes down the center, just like that guy cord goes down to center in yellow, and at each level where there's a disc, it'll give off a root. So those nerve roots come off of each side, and unfortunately, they don't like to be pinched off, but if you're going to have a pinch or a bulge, it'll bulge out and pinch right there at the nerve root because it's the smallest area uh, between all these bony prominences, and it has a tendency to do that. But here's the argument. That shows a bulging disc. If I was to say, I can't walk around because I hurt and somebody hears me say that and that somebody, which is an orthopedic surgeon, gets an MRI and says, hey, you got a bulging disc. It, the tendency is if I can't turn that pain around, the surgeon will say, well, I can fix it. I can fix your pain. They don't usually go straight for surgery. Hopefully they don't. Hopefully they'll try conservative measures first. Physical therapy, this back brace, um, which is very good. It's bracing is uh, is there to help you with your core. Hopefully your core is good, but when you're suffering from spasm and you're walking around and every time you take a step, it grabs you and sends pain down your leg, which it almost kind of did with me. Uh, then usually you're so tight that you walk around in a normal nine to fiver. And you get fatigued because you're so tight. Man, normally you don't even, you don't flex your muscles all the time. Your core I'm talking about. In fact, if I was to do that with my bicep and do this like nine to five continuously, my, my arm would fatigue. If I did that with my core continuously, my core would fatigue. So what happens throughout the day, certain muscles turn on, certain muscles turn off. Sometimes it's just balanced, turn off all the muscles and you just sit there properly. Sometimes you get into a very well-designed seat. So... Most of the time we can turn off and turn on so that we don't fatigue out the entire musculature all at the same time. But the problem is when you're grabbing like this with pain, you're constantly holding and eventually what's gonna happen is you fatigue out. 
So I hate to say it, but with COVID patients who can't breathe, they're taking a lot of deep breaths. They'll do fine if they can keep this up. But people who are out of shape, they can't keep it up. So eventually <laughs> they get tired. I can't, I can't, I can't continue breathing. You got to put them on a vent. So the happy hypoxic needs support. The unhappy back guy needs support. If I can't manage and I'm in too much pain, I take off from work. If lying down, I still have pain, and that's the next level. If I'm not even working, I still have pain, and I have that MRI, I'm going to surgery. Eh, sometimes you get an injection in the back, either a medial branch block or dump steroids in the epidural space, but all those things are supposed to be countermeasures to prevent everybody getting surgery. But again, I think surgeons are very good. If you have a bad enough problem, they can actually take the disc out, and this one doesn't have that much fat in it. It's from being 57 and powerlifting when I was younger and landing on mats when I practiced Aikido. Uh, that could be a problem. So, so they can sometimes fill that space with cement. But the problem is, if you were to cement two levels, that takes care of the problem. There's no more bulge. But guess what? You're supposed to be flexible. This thing is supposed to be supple. If you lock out two areas, from prevent them from spasming up, that's cool. Prevent them from bulging up, that's cool. But what happens to the articulations above and below? They do more work. And when they do more work, the chances are they're going to be overused and they're going to bulge. So what are you going to do? Keep on doing surgeries? No. You're going to try to change around the dynamics of lifestyle. Maybe lose weight. Work on posture. Change ergonomics at work. Uh, get a different car. So education has to be done. Conservative has to be done. Support has to be done. But uh, I, m the bottom line with this is I don't want everybody to go around thinking that just because they have back pain and a disc that shows up on an MRI, because everybody's so hot. I, can, I know everybody does their homework, but sometimes they'll say, I got this back pain, I want to have an MRI. Well, I'd like to have an MRI too, but insurance won't pay for a $5,000 test. So if you want to get an MRI, you can pay for it. But if it doesn't change the treatment plan, because we're going to try conservative treatment first, why even bother? Now, if you're failing and you're numb and tingly, or you got a limp, that means that you've destroyed and bagged the nerve, it's time to get the MRI, but this is going to be the map for the surgeon. So if you're ready to go for surgery, time to get the MRI. But my, my folks who are so hot to try to get an MRI, if you want to pay 5,000 bucks to just let me tell you that we're going with a physical therapist, going with an acupuncturist, going to help you lose weight, going to give you some time off of work. I would do those other things first before getting that test done. So it's important to note that the anatomy of those discs is, the disc is a compression. It's a compression that compresses, but it's supposed to bound backwards. If it doesn't, because there's no more jelly, then it's going to compress and it's going to stay bulged out unless the musculature around the backbone and in front of the backbone, which is the abs, unless all that musculature, unless that core is excellent, which I, I'm hoping my core is excellent to deal with that thing. But uh, everybody thinks that they just have that and it's time for surgery, but that's not it. So you're supposed to, discs are supposed to expand and return, just like my handy tire. So I just happen to have this because I wanted to fill up with air, but if you notice a tire when you when your when your tire hits the ground or a pothole, an edge, uh, a sidewalk, I do a lot of tricks on mine. I do pop wheelies and stuff. But uh, if your tires are working properly, you'll see that your tire will take a little compensation. It'll give in a little bit and bulge out to the sides because that's what you want. Now, if it's too flat, like that guy, it's not only going to come out to the side; you're going to destroy the frame. So you just have to have enough. If it's too full of air, there won't be any give and it won't, it, you, you, you can't do that either. And that's like putting cement in there. So it has to be just the right amount of pressure to tolerate your average load. If you're an average person, you weigh an average weight and tolerate the average street. So if it does give, cool. If it's underinflated or overinflated, not cool. So those are the things that you have to know that about with the dynamics of the back. The dynamics of core, dynamics of your weight, dynamics of posture. You can't be too bent forward. If you're too bent forward, you change the you change. If you're too bent forward, you change the position of the disc. It'll always be pushing out the back. And if you're walking around with a big belly, you're changing the position of the disc. That's and you're pinching. So you have to have. There's a lot of things in play. 
So it's not just an MRI. It's not just you have pain. I think the majority of times I can get diagnosis just with 80% 80, 80 of the time to 90% of the time, I can get the diagnosis just by asking you questions. Uh, it usually helps to get into physical therapy for them to analyze how you do, what areas are weak, maybe even to use modalities like ultrasound, electric stimulation, iontophoresis to get maybe steroids down into the lower areas. And if that fails, fine, sometimes just positioning. So there's exercises that are called Williams exercises or McKenzie exercises that work to also indirectly push the disc back in by position changes. They do work, but you have to be uh, seen by a physical therapist that knows their stuff. Chiropractors are also good. I think chiropractors are able to, using the concept of um, subluxation and distraction, and that thing called the thumper, they can get the spasm to go away temporarily. So if you have a really good chiropractor, then go for it. That'll take the pain down quick. If you have a really good physical therapist, go for it because in the long run, that'll take the pain away and keep it away. That'll help you. That's your coach for making lifestyle changes in the long run. If you don't have anybody, acupuncture would help, uh, not covered by insurance most of the time. And if you still don't have anybody, then you probably are screwed. So, I mean, you can learn a lot of things. Hopefully you just stop doing what you're doing, then you'll heal up. But I think I would like if, that always is helpful, but if you can compress the time frame of your healing so that you're not out of work too long and you're not in bed too long, because being in bed, being immobile will help the healing come, but it also makes you weak. So the longer you stay off your feet, cool, but uh, not so cool because you're going to be weak. So the first time, if the disc is gone and the nerve is not being pinched off and the bulge is returned back into its place, you get up, you're weaker than before, so technically you can easily fall off the edge again as far as that bulge coming back. So uh, there's push-pull there. So you really need to lifestyle change. But bottom line is that there's a lot of dynamics. Hopefully this gave you a couple of ideas. Uh, Anti-inflammatories, I think, are fair. Uh, pain, re re pain control in the form of narcotics, hmm, if necessary, you gotta sleep, then it's necessary. Muscle relaxants, I think, are really good in the short run. In the long run, there's a lot of side effects, dry mouth, drowsiness, car accidents. So uh, there's a give and take here. There's also a lot of conservative treatment, topical anesthesia, topical pain relief, CBD. There's a lot of things you can do to take the inflammation down before it gets to be surgical. So uh, reach out to your docs, see my other videos on back pain. Hopefully I'll give you a couple of ideas. Otherwise, uh, don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you at the next video.